Alright, so last time out we got flattened by a herd of horse riders enough times for me to convince myself I have developed a fear of horses. Actually, give me a second, I want to sound smart real quick. Uh, what is the word for a fear of horses? Equinophobia. 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 I developed a quinophobia. Fortunately, the pain in Shadow Prague was not completely in vain because now we can access this little cave which should be housing a promotion station. Or at least that's what I call these promoting areas. What else do you call them? Hardware update statues. And before we think about fighting anything else past that horse map, we should prioritize being promoted so that we suck less. In my excitement of being so close to having units upgrade from Magikarp plushies to armed military trained Mega Gyaradoses, I had completely forgotten there is always a fight right before we can enter the room with the promotion station. So basically that thing I said about not fighting again until we get our promotions will now be ignored because apparently that was a bad idea to begin with. This shouldn't be too bad though because these fights are normally pretty easy. We just did a pseudo boss map so the rust I had should be gone. The map is much smaller so our units can support each other much easier and how obvious am I making it that we get grinded into a fine pace because that's what happens. So gargoyles was the poison of choice for this little cave map and in case you've never seen them before in this game, here they are. Gross. So after assessing that the sickle wielding back human hybrids were probably going to be more dangerous than the hotline bling hitting zombies that we fought in caves like this before, I checked the stats of the gargoyles and turns out they're the type of enemy to have high defense and resistance. You know, like a boss. They're also fast enough to hit arm twice which means they hit twice on 95% of my entire team. Yikes. So my first gut reaction to deal with this new enemy was to use my archers to see if they do any extra damage. Well, actually, my gut's first reaction was to vomit, but I guess that's different. Because when it comes to these Fire Emblem games, you can normally assume two things are true. One being that heavy armor units probably have a weakness to BS, I mean magic. And two being that anything with wing probably couldn't survive an arrow to the knee. So of course, I wanted to test my archer theory with Python. Come on. Are my... do my archers not work? Yes. While playing this map, I started to notice something. After accepting the fact that the gargoyles were going to be a problem, I noticed that one of my units was missing because said unit would probably be one of my most capable at handling stronger enemies. That missing unit being Matilda, which shouldn't be a problem because from the games I've played, being the first and last game in the Fire Emblem series, there have always been maps with a unit cap. Some maps allow for 8 units, some allow for 12 units, so what makes this any different, right? Well, you see, in Fire Emblem 1 and 3 houses, before you enter a fight, you're forced onto a menu screen where you select the unit you want to use. And in this menu portion, there will be a number showing you how many characters you can use on the map. Gaiden on the other hand does not have that menu before fights, so even though it is possible to technically pick the units you want to use for a level by swapping around units during the overworld sections, there is no way to know how many units can be used on any given map. In short, sometimes you can enter maps expecting to use your whole team, but when you actually get on the map, some units just won't be there. Now if you kept up with all that, you may be thinking, okay so what if sometimes units don't show up on the map because of a unit cap? The unused units are still on your team, just because they aren't there doesn't mean they disappear from your team entirely. But what if I told you they can just disappear? Sounds crazy, I know, but trust me, Fire Emblem is not above doing this to real human beings. You see, there was an interaction we had with a unit in Celica's group when we had first recruited them that brought up an interesting idea. Me? Well, I can join y'all if you like. I can join y'all if you like. Haha. <laughs> Unless you're gonna fight the dragons. <laughs> Unless you're gonna fight the dragon zombie, in which case, I will see you later, I'm not staying. There's no way to defeat that thing without... Angel magic. Oh, okay. So last time they said something like this, I had no idea what it meant, but now I do. So there's going to be a thing literally called angel magic, I would assume, and we have to use that to destroy it. So until we get that, we don't fight it. You, you know what I think might actually happen? This game is probably actually programmed to where if you go and try to fight this thing right now, then the team that you pulled together actually just leaves you. I would not be surprised because the way, the way Kamui was like, yeah, bro, if you try to fight that thing, I'm catching a cab. The way he said it, I was kind of like, yeah, bro, I think I think he leaves if we actually try any of that ish. Now, of course, I never actually tested my theory because becoming zombie dragon food only sounds fun in the context of a roller coaster, so I don't know how the mechanic works. However, that one moment did give me a good reason to be concerned, especially because I thought it was only Matilda who mysteriously disappeared. So I did what any calm and rational individual would do in this situation and panic. Where's Matilda? Where's Matilda? Where'd she go? What's the problem? Wait a second. Did she say something about leaving if we go inside of a cave? Okay. Alright. Um, hmm. Maybe I should have checked to see what, sh what exactly she said to us when I recruited her. Because uh, she might have said something about not going in a cave and uh, that's what I did. Can, am I not supposed to be here? I'm under the assumption I'm not supposed to be here. You, you know what? We're not strong enough to do this. Unless, okay. 
I'm gonna check one thing. I'm going to hit them with Gray's Thunder, the Bolt, I mean. And if they do not take a significant amount of damage, like 14 minimum, then I'm gonna leave. Cause that'll, that'll tell me that I'm not supposed to be here. I'm gonna hit one of the ones with full HP. Gray. <laughs> I actually very much needed you to hit that. That was gonna be my decide. You know what, I don't care. We're going back. I just I can't be bothered. Okay, okay. After letting my paranoia get the best of me and feeling like we were being overwhelmed in the power department, I left the fight to make sure Matilda didn't just up and leave because she was scared of a little bat cave. Anyway, after verifying Matilda is not, hold on. Spelunkophobic? Spelunkophobia. Spelunkophobic. Wait, like the game? We rearranged the team lineup and jumped back in, hoping that maybe this time they would go easier on us or something like that, because I had no plan. So obviously we lost, but it was because they killed Cliff and not Silk. She was only beaten half to death. Now at this point, I accept the fact that we are not built to fight these gargoyles and decided that I should stop pulling a Vegeta by letting myself get clapped for pride I shouldn't have. So you know how we're trying to get to this promotion station, but it's being blocked by the gargoyles we can't kill? Well, there are other promotion stations being blocked by enemies that are hundreds of times more manageable earlier in the game. So simple solution to our problem, we turn on baby mode and run back to an easier promotion station like the coward we are supposed to be. We're going to do the thing that I didn't want to do because uh, I'm lazy or something like that. I'm going back to get promotions because this is what's going on wait what geese's fleet assembled what does that mean wait wait what the no way are you telling me that they're gonna start moving towards no what is that what does that even mean are they punishing me for going back you're kidding okay all right, I get it, I get it, I get it. Bro, is this game, like, is this game okay? Yeah, it turns out this game is baby-proof and coward-proof because for some reason, the more you move in the overworld map with arms group, then the closer the enemies on Celica's side start closing in on Celica's group. Now I understand why people call Three Houses easy because these first few games have their difficulty set to unplayable by default and if you can't handle it, then screw you. Anyway, we tried again. Plan was to go all out attack and hope we kill them before they kill us. So Ryuto died, mainly because when your only form of offense and defense is to sacrifice health you'll notice you die faster and i smart as i am managed to forget that new plan don't use the old plan i can't believe that worked after finally beating the gargoyles we found a young girl who i thought was going to join our little army we got here but instead she did a responsible thing and ran away from us because even though we saved her life stranger danger takes priority fair enough but also screw her i just saved her life all right so bye